Hey guys, welcome back to another one. Uh, in the last video, we had got the boat off of the trailer and onto the wood blocks. We've made a bit of a pivot in uh, wanting to repair the bottom of the hull, so we're we're going to actually borrow a rotisserie uh, to get the boat up in the air, so we can flip it right over, and that way I don't have to lay underneath it and sand, which is awesome. So this rotisserie. We last used to flip over a car, and we're just going to make some fixtures right now to go um, from the rotisserie to some mounting points on the boat. So the way these will work is there's uh, a couple long pieces of square tube, 24 feet, that are going to go between the front rotisserie here that we're going to make a fixture to mount to the bow eye, and then there is also a second rotisserie. This will make right now a fixture that will mount to the jack plate on the back of the boat here. And then with a jack that goes in here, uh, we're going to lift the front and rear rotisseries so that we can then on this pivot point here, flip the entire boat upside down, hopefully and that should make working on the bottom of the hull a lot easier. So, uh, right now we're just gonna work on making these fixtures. Another task we wanted to get out of the way before we flipped the boat over was getting all the through hull fittings taken out because a lot of them were in or close to areas where we are going to be uh, repairing and re-gel coating. So uh, I managed to find this nice broken bilge pump uh, while we're going at it. So you know that would have inspired a lot of confidence out on the water as is. The windshields we took off just just cause why not rather than risk breaking one and here we are just getting ready to uh, remove the exterior through hull stuff which had the like 20 year old adhesive on it that was uh, no fun to remove randy's generously cleaning up the rotisseries get them all shined up and back to their former glory and we're almost ready to rock and roll what are you doing here, Chris? Hey, Bill Ranch. <laughs> Drilling a radius in the corners, probably just for a little clearance on the plastic nut. Because it's going to have a rounded corner. Rather than Genius. Something. Almost probably looks like a pentagram. Probably could be a little bigger than that, but we can always put a round file to it to you know, clean it up. I know. Start small, work our way out. Gotcha. Next we're gonna use a two inch hole saw in the center to get rid of the mass. And we're going into the vise filing. Right on. So what you just saw there was the start of us making a tool to remove the last two large, large nuts for the live well drains. I'm pretty sure they were. Uh, we didn't have a single socket wrench or adjustable in the shop that would be big enough to go around these uh, plastic nuts. So we just made, uh, I guess I'm going to call it a crow's foot out of a flat piece of aluminum. And uh, we're going to see if it does the trick. What do you mean? Wow. Want any of this chopped off? You start selling yeah. the store. This point off there, so I I can't see you really getting in the way, and it's just something else to do. Um, All right, try her again then. Sure. All right. For right now, she's stuck rip. on there. Jesus, let's do this together. People are gonna make a comment like when it just used the channel locks or something. Yeah, well, I'm fuck. Uh, reuse is not maybe and fucking actually put it back on and tighten it up properly. It's not gonna work. 
Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, here we go. Here, I'm on the... Uh, For your left. Yeah. She's letting go. I'm just going to work it back and forth so I don't break the nut. So some of you watching this might say to yourself, Kyle, why didn't you just grab onto it with a good pair of channel locks and give her the old heave ho? Well, it had some probably factory original adhesive or something sealant in there. And after 23 years, that stuff had turned to like cement. So to save us either damaging the hull or damaging the fittings in the case that we couldn't find replacements, we just wanted to take some extra care to make sure that both were still usable if we needed them. Next up on the to-do list was to make a reinforcement for the bow eye because we just didn't want to have any risk of damaging the hull with the amount of force we'd have to put on the bow eye when we were flipping this thing over. So I just grabbed yet again another piece of aluminum stock that I'm going to just drill a couple holes through to match up with the bow eye holes and then I can reinstall the bow eye and there is no risk of it either pulling through or damaging the inside of the hull by putting too much pressure on the existing mounting hardware. Everything's all welded up now. We've gusseted the one for the bow. We're just concerned with a little bit of flex there. Here's the one for the jack plate on the back. That's gonna get mounted through these and then onto the jack plate. Yeah, oh yeah, you're left then. That's what I mean. Is the boat coming up off the bottom? Yeah. Yeah, oh, there you go. What was that? Uh, there was, oh, must have been a bolt on the bow. We've just tipped it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's... you're up off the bunks right now. Okay, don't, don't move it. Yeah. It's, it's like articulating, right? This is? Yeah, because it's pulling up this way. Yeah, yeah, no, that's what I'm saying is because, here, here's what's going on. Because this can pivot and it's not rigid, it's not pulling the boat up this way, it's just letting it articulate like this. So until you have weight on this, yeah. right, well, we it's not gonna... Not, we might not get it here. Yeah, exactly, right? It's just kind of doing this right now. It's not lifting the boat, it's just articulating upwards. So we're gonna be out of... Yeah. So we're going to use this jack out of a cherry picker to lift it up. On the front, we're still going to use the bumper jack. Yes, we are. Yeah. At this point. Yeah. We made some additions to the 
front fixture here. We put this additional brace at the thought that this was a little wobbly. Um, so this now is uh, a piece of angle that uh, just cups into the uh, hull so that it's some support when it's going to roll over. And we've also added this strap and wood system to try and keep it all compressed together. Um, but yeah, it's, it's all uh, hooked up now. We've got the square tube that ties the front part of the rotisserie together to the back part of the rotisserie. So um, we actually had it rocking up in, in the air and back and forth. So yeah, we are just about ready to turn it over. Oh yeah, now we gotta now we gotta lift the whole thing evenly up in the air so that when it's up it has enough space to flip and clear without hitting the hitting the floor. So that'll be the, the next step is to jack the front up with the bumper jack and jack the back up with the hydraulic jack here. So yeah. Hopefully uh, my next cut in this edit is cutting to us flipping it. curious about what this is this is an automotive well, I, would you call it an automotive rotisserie? automotive rotisserie an automotive rotisserie that's what it's meant for yeah it's meant for flipping car bodies over and stuff like that if you wanted to make one they're really simple there's like no machining or anything it's just square tube and if you have access to a bandsaw and a welder you could you could fab one of these up yourself i'm sure there's lots of plans on the internet um but yeah it's a, pretty much the only way to do it if you don't have a gantry crane Okay, the boat's upside down now, so that's a huge project we've knocked off, and we took some time to erect this structure. We're gonna drape some plastic over top of it as a way of dust, uh, as a way of dust containment inside the shop for when we're sanding the gel coat on the bottom of the hull. Come here, Father. Let's show the gel coat on the bottom of the hull. So this, this now we can get a really good look at why we've got the boat upside down. You can really get a good look at all of the osmosis and uh, blistering. There's a bunch of uh, stress cracking under there as well that we're gonna take care of. Uh, so yeah, so now we've got the boat upside down. The next step is gonna be that we're going to, with an airboard, sand this, uh, sand it down to the laminate. But to do that, we need air. And unfortunately, our compressor quit on us. So now we have, 
Now we have this project to work on. We're just trying to adapt our old compressor uh, motor onto a new compressor tank. So Dad and Randy are working on that through the week so that next weekend we can hopefully drape some plastic over that one and we'll maybe get to, to sanding it. So yeah, thanks for checking things out guys. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. We'll see you next time.